Right, you're All on. right, you are on. Thank and you, what buddy. better way? We did not let you down. It is Maz and myself today. Here is another, <laughs> a, here's another format you've never seen before. Maz and myself. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing well, guys. I'm doing well. It's it's like this time of year where it's supposed to be like quiet usually, but of course yeah. in the NFL, nothing ever gets quiet. We always have stuff going on. You're Sport not kidding, man. Gets, keeps on giving. Hey, man, I want to I want to start you off uh, in the gambling world, Ari. Uh, obviously, uh, everyone knows the Lions pretty much were the first team to 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 get hit with this gambling uh, uh, probation this year, and you know you lose Jamison Williams in upwards of six games. And now you're hearing all this other stuff coming out. The kid Rogers from Indianapolis, Albert Breer writes that there's more players that are being uncovered. We're going to see a litany of players uh, get hit with this this gambling uh, thing. I, I just got to ask you, did, this is from, from 2022. They make the new rule in 2022. Since then, obviously, they're in bed with way more sports books. Uh, I mean, the Superdome is named after a sports book, and that's coming up. The Super Bowl's coming up there in two years. You're playing in Vegas uh, this upcoming year. I just don't. I don't know if the players really know the rules. What What do you think here? Yeah, I think that is the major issue that the NFL has had, and I, I don't want to blame it all on them because they do the they do have these seminars, which right. they have league officials go to. The, teams at training camp at mini camp and they present you know a powerpoint explaining what happens if you do it and the consequences and the problem really is is that the nfl has gone just so all in not just the nfl every sport has gone so all in with all these sports books that you literally cannot walk 10 feet without no. seeing it you can't watch a game without 10 commercials about it without it being on the court or whatever or even the stadium being named after it that they're also giving you all these enticing offers that you know join and you get 500 dollars for free and it's like yep. oh let me try this right so that's really where the issue is and what the nfl has been trying to do and what they are really pounding in right now they've, they've been using these players as examples i mean calvin ridley was used as an example if you do it you could be a star player you have an 11 million dollar salary it all gets wiped out and it tolls over to the next year this has their rogers example would be very interesting because the report which is out there is that he bet on hundreds he put hundreds of wagers and apparently some of them were on the Colts. and you know according to the nfl um, it, it, this thing was not really collect, collectively bargained. So Roger Goodell really could put any rule he wants. And if this yeah. player in particular put a, put games on the Colts or against the Colts, I would not be surprised if Roger uses him as an example, maybe even banishes him for, for life potentially, oh. or doing something crazy like that, just to make an example out of these players to say we cannot have this. It's the integrity of the game. And if it happens, it makes us look bad. It's obviously a big deal. And they have to make an example of some of these players who are falling into those traps. All right, here's another question. They already look bad. Like, how do we make this better? And they already look bad for them since I've been in the NFL. I know how it is when they tell the public that they do one thing, they preach one thing, and they clearly don't. They make it optional. They make it where, hey, you know, come by this, you know, come by the, the practice, more, the meeting rooms. After practice, we got a presentation. If you don't show up to the presentation, how am I to know the information that I missed? This is the NFL at its best. Is there a way to just completely eliminate it? In my thoughts, I'm like, hey, look, just don't let them bet on football. Like, if you don't let them bet on football, like, you cannot bet on the NFL because one, yeah, you can bet over here, but you can't bet over there. You can bet on this day, but you can't bet on that day. You can bet on this game, but now you're in the game, you can't bet. You can just, bet across the street from Woodward Sports, but, but you where can't the bet Wi-Fi here doesn't connect. Right. What if they just made it? There's no betting on the NFL. That's the one thing I've heard a lot, especially from agents who are like, the rules were set by the NFL. Again, it was not bargained. With the, with the union, which is a bit stupid. I mean, like, yeah. the rules are out there, which is basically, um, as you mentioned, you you could bet on the NBA, but you have to do it away from the facility. But if you're doing the facility, you have to spend the six games. Like, who cares where you're doing it, right? So yeah. I think that's part of it where the union has to step in over here and say, the rules that we have in place, we agree. Betting on NFL games, 100% no. Betting on your team, definitely not. But betting on, you know, UFC, NBA, or any of these other sports, it should be allowed regardless of where you are. Now, the thing I think what the NFL is thinking about is that if you are betting on other sports, and let's just say you lose 50 bucks, you go, you know what, I know who we're playing, I know the game plan, let me now do it on my team. Eventually, maybe you start thinking about, I have an advantage here, I'll do it on my team, and eventually something happens there. Maybe that's part of the thinking, 
as to why they don't want you to do it in the facility where you are thinking about your current team or stuff like that. That's just right. I'm trying to think about why the NFL did it like that. But you do have a point. And again, this is part of it where the NFL, Roger Goodell, and his team put together these rules. And the union was not involved. And I think the union should step in and at least try to work on this together with the league to try to make it make some sense. How does the union step in, Ari, if they weren't involved the first time around? Like, how does that how does that even work? What does that look like? Well, the way this stuff works is if you give us something, we give you something back. So if the NFL was to say, you know, we'll talk to you about something, then eventually future negotiations, the NFL is going to have to get something back. So as a union, you're going to have to think about this and say, is it worth, for, worth it for us to give in on this and eliminate um, other sports um, from betting in the facility in exchange for something else in future negotiations when it comes to bargaining. Like there are a bunch of different things. For example, the franchise tag. The PA, you know, probably wants to eliminate it, but at the same time, they're thinking about the fact really about, you know, five to 10 players every year that's affecting. So is it worth us eliminating that and eventually have to give them something back to the NFL? So that's really the, the map that is thought of when it comes to these type of stuff between the league and the union. All right, this, this is really easy. We all walk around with these devices. We all do. It's part of our hands, for crying out loud. Uh, the NFL could do two things. They can block out all wait, all all gambling sites. I mean, they have an internet. They have people that are running their computers. You can put a block on it that you can't get on it. Or what Braylon said, and I think it makes the most sense. Listen, you're in bed with bookies. You're in bed with sports books. Let the players bet. Let them do whatever the hell they want as long as they stay away from the National Football League. That's the simplest rule. I don't think the NFL is going to change anything right now. I think they have one mission right now, and it's to try to get this current rule, that the way, it's set, the way it is set up right now, and to get that across the players. And I think as a player, and probably Braylon could talk more about this, but if you're a player in a locker room and the minimum salary in the NFL right now, I believe it's about a million, is it worth it for you to place a bet where you know that if I get caught, and the likelihood is I do get caught, by placing a $25 bet or a $100 bet or even a $10,000 bet, when eventually I'm losing my entire salary, potentially my entire future in this league. So those are the type of things that the NFL are trying to get across the players. The, the thing that we mentioned before what makes it really difficult is the fact that the stuff is all over the place. Like it's impossible yeah. to miss it. You can't go on Instagram without, after your stories, seeing an ad for drafting. Like it's going to be there, right? So that's really part of it. And you have to try to find a way to not click on it and join it and do something with it. And that's really the issue where I don't know how the NFL solves that. I don't know if if the blocking stuff works, I don't know if putting a filter on every player's phone makes sense. I don't think players are going to be okay with you know people touching their phone. So it's a complicated thing. But uh, the NFL right now, these are the rules that are in place. These are the rules that they want out there. And they're going to use these players as examples who are getting caught. And there probably will be more players who will be announced in the future months of the year as players who did gamble last year. And they're going to be suspended in six games or indefinitely because of it. And players have to wake up because of it. Yeah, because of all the gambling questions, you can tell that the Detroit Lions have been affected by gambling, hence all the questions that we ask you. But let's switch gears. Let's talk about something, a merge that happened, and some guys got left out. Talk about Liv merging with the PGA, how that thing came together. And guys like Roy McIlroy, how are they going to recoup what they may have lost? Well, this is definitely not my, my, my topic when it comes to my world. But the interesting thing about what happened there with Liv and PGA. You always know, Art. You really always know. <laughs> uh, the thing about me, by the way, is I'm probably like the least person when it comes to golf. But this story yesterday me too. made me jump in and try to figure out, <laughs> made me try to figure out what in the world is this all about? Yeah. Because I, I've been following it, but I really have not been following it too closely. And then yesterday, I was just dug in on all of it. But the one thing everyone's been asking when it comes to this is just all the money that Saudi Arabia has, and is there any chance in any world where they would be interested in purchasing an NFL team at some point? And will the NFL ever allow that? I mean, that's really an angle that I was looking at after all this came out yesterday. And, you know, you're looking at how much teams are being sold for right now. Six billion to commander. Let's just say the Seahawks are next up to be sold. Um, obviously, you have the guys like a Jeff Bezos or a Steve Ballmer. But what if Saudi Arabia walks in and says, we'll pay $9 billion for this team? <sighs> Does the NFL say no? So, like, that part of all of this is interesting because they're getting involved with our sports. And it's 
basically been impossible for people to say no to the money they're offering. So I think that element of all of this is what's next for them? Are they, which other sports are they going to try to, to jump in here yep. and get involved with? And, um, you know, there have been people around the league who have wondered about that when it comes to football at the very least. All right, I want to uh, ask you about a, a tweet you put out about an hour ago, and it was the uh, it was on D Hop, uh, and he's be visiting DeAndre Hopkins is going to be visiting the Titans next week. Uh, did he watch any video of Ryan Tannehill b- before he made this appointment? That's my first question, <laughs> and second of all, do you think he's going to sign there? Who's got the lead here for D Hop? Yeah, so D Hop just hired an agent. He was, uh, yeah, he, this is, he's been an interesting little process throughout this office. He had an agent, then he moved on from that agent, and he used St. Omni, who is well known with Laramie Tunsil and some other players who was not certified. Now he hires another agent because he's a free agent. And yeah. he's going to the Titans first. I mean, it sounds like there are multiple teams who have definitely checked in. And this is for now just a visit to check it out. It's probably worth mentioning that. Their head coach, Mike Vrabel, was with him in Houston when yeah. they were together there when he was a defensive coordinator. So there I is forgot a about that. Yeah. There in the, tit- the Titans are probably, from all the teams in the NFL, when it comes to receiving corps, probably have the weakest one. Of course, they traded A.J. Brown last year. Traylon Burks was their first-round pick, and after that, it's like, who do we have on this team? So they could definitely use him, but when you look at what Hop said on I Am Athlete and the three things that he's looking for, he mentioned um, a good quarterback, some stability with the head coach and GM, and a good defense. And then for me, when I was watching that, I'm like, what about the money? Because we all know in this business and yeah, team, about the, the money eventually talks. Eventually talks, exactly, really. So yeah. if the Titans come up and say, you know, well, we'll give you, you know, one year, $10 million of incentives for more, and the other offers out there are like one year, $5 million, up to seven or whatever, how does he decide over there? You know what I mean? So for now, I think it's just a visit for him. There have been other teams that have interest in, that have been, had interest. Buffalo and Kansas City definitely checked in while he was available for trade, but both those teams have invested some of their money recently in other positions. Kansas City, Donovan Smith, Buffalo, and Leonard Floyd. So when the when it comes to the cap space element and how you make it fit, it's a little bit difficult for them, but there is a way of making it work. But for now, he's just visiting the first team for now. It's likely going to happen on Sunday or Monday, and we'll see how that visit goes and if he wants to take more visits after that. Yeah, I definitely think you're right about that. It's going to be about the money for D-Hop at this point in his career, and especially it doesn't doesn't help when you see guys like Odell Beckham signing a deal coming off two ACLs where you're looking at, I know that I can do more than Odell can at this point. Let's bring it to the Lions. You know where we are. You know it's hometown. You know it's Detroit. Speaking of quarterbacks, speaking of money, Jerry Goff talking about extensions. He said, hey, we're no talks during the season. But yesterday, Dan Campbell, he talked about Jerry Goff being light years ahead of where he was when he first got here. Just talk about what Jerry Goff has meant to his Lions and the, the future for them to merge fully. Yeah, I mean, I mean we, we've spoken about this in the past. What Jared Goff has done really ever since he came in that trade. When that trade happened, people kind of considered Jared Goff to be a throw-in in the trade. And because yeah. the Lions took on his contract, they were able to get an extra first-round pick. And Brad Holmes, to his credit, he was there. Looked around for the draft to the number one overall. And he's like, this guy has talent. This guy has played well in the past. A lot of people give credit to Sean McVay. and definitely deserves some of that credit. But we've seen him play well. We've seen him take a team to the Super Bowl. And he's still young. I mean, he's still in his 20s. So why not bring him in here as we try to put our our footprint here on this team when he was hired? And last year, of course, was that big resurgent year for Jared Goff. And the Lions are clearly all in with him as their quarterback. They've been impressed so far. And the thing about, about this is the fact that the Lions are in the NFC, you look at all the quarterbacks who are in that conference, like Jared Goff is a top five quarterback in the conference. You wouldn't be able to say that of the AFC. And if Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell were in the AFC with Jared Goff, I wouldn't be shocked. They, they would at least be looking around to see if we should be looking to get an upgrade somewhere because it would be much more difficult to beat the Burroughs and the Allens and the Mahomes and the Mars and all that. So. The fact you're in the NFC, you have a really good roster, you could win with Jared Goff. And I think they've realized that. And having Ben Johnson back is a big part of it as well. Um, those two really gelled 
um, last year, and they're they'll run it back again this year. And I'm really curious to see what they do with that extension and if it gets done. Because when, when this offseason started, a lot of people were asking, what is the middle ground when it comes to quarterback contracts? We all know everyone tries to beat each other. But then we had the Daniel Jones and the Derek Carr and the Geno Smith, and they kind of set it for us. So the Lions have a good example of what his contract should be. It's probably in that range, somewhere in between what Derek Carr and Daniel Jones got. And uh, it wouldn't be shocking to at least have those discussions and try to extend them because after this year, he has one year left, and none of that money is guaranteed. So I'm sure golf is at least trying to get some security on that. Hey, all right, before we let you go, I got to say, are you staying indoors more these days with this bad air quality? I saw a picture of Yankee Stadium tonight, and I – I couldn't believe what it looks like out there. I have all my family is from New Jersey. I'm from here. I moved here in 93. I spent 31 years there. So I've never seen it look quite that dark, that dingy. What's the deal out there, man? Forest yeah, fires man, in Canada, it's, it's baby. It's, it's, it's insane. I'm here in New York. I'm in my house today. Yeah. I keep on looking out the window. It's much better now than what it Good. was like an hour ago. But it was literally orange slash yellow yeah. the entire day. Starting it's to unbelievable. It was insane. Like, I've never seen anything like this. Like, you walk outside, and it's it's like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and it's a different color. Like, literally a yeah. different color. I've never, yeah. I've never seen that before. So, um, it, I don't know, but I'm not, you know, someone who understands all the air quality yeah. stuff and, and whatnot. I mean, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's weird. It's scary. And, obviously, you think about what's going on in Canada, how it ends up all the way here in New York. But it's amazing. But it's here. It's much better now. But um, it, was, it was a little bit weird in the last few hours, looking outside every couple of hours and just seeing that color. Like, what is going well, on here? You take care of yourself, all right? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me on, guys. Tom, you got really it, man. Great to talk to you guys. Thanks, Ari. He's You're the Ari man. You're the man. My 33rd team. You can join at my sports update. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, buddy.